today we're going to take a look at the most expensive thing I've ever bought for a teardown. Not in retail price, but in what I actually paid for it, which was $401 with free shipping. This is an iBoss, which is a really stupid name. And I googled around to try and figure out what it does exactly. And it's some kind of cloud gateway nonsense. I, I don't know. I don't care. Who cares what it does? But it looks really cool. This is actually one of the neatest looking uh, rack mount cases I've seen. And it's got these uh, differently shaped cutouts in the front for the air vent. But they look very neat. I like the, I like the design of it. It actually kind of looks like my orange printer filament. This is essentially just a super micro server with a funny faceplate on it. And the reason why I spent so much money on it is because it's actually a really impressive machine and they were essentially selling it as the components in a server. So I don't know for sure if this is what the actual model comes with. Like if, if they just built a system and just put it into this box or if this is just actually how the company sells it. Because if this is how it ships from the company, this is a really good system to try and pick up on the cheap because this thing is very powerful. Uh, my particular one included a high-end four port uh, gigabit ethernet card from Intel, which uh, I won't be using because I've actually installed a uh, 10 gigabit ethernet using some older cards with a fiber connection. On the back of this thing, they really limited the IO on this by uh, covering up a lot of the things on it. So they strictly want you using only the ports they provide. Uh, these are dual gigabit ethernet ports. There's a VGA connector behind the tampering with this device void, voids warranty thing, which is funny because all you have to do is unscrew it. There's no sticker or anything. You can just take it off and use it. Uh, serial port, two USB 2 ports, PS2 port, and there's actually another ethernet connector behind this that they didn't break out and that is for the um, out of band management so you can remotely control the computer you can actually go into the BIOS remotely you can power it on power it off you can do basically everything you can do if you were standing right in front of it you can load virtual drives all sorts of stuff it's a very very powerful feature of uh, many server boards but um, Supermicro makes makes pretty good ones here we have the insides with a giant Delta blower fan. This is a very standard design that Supermicro uses for their 1U servers. And this thing is incredibly loud, but it is PWM controlled and it does slow down as uh, needed. Uh, this drive is obviously not what came with it. This is just my um, testing drive that I use. Uh, just a little SSD. Uh, it actually came with a Western Digital 4 terabyte RE series, which is their, their enterprise drives. That drive is gonna end up in the NAS along with a whole bunch of other stuff and this motherboard as part of a big project to do like a complete overhaul of my uh, the NAS that we have. This is a Supermicro motherboard, the X9 SRI-F, which is a socket uh, 2011 motherboard. I've never actually had a 2011 socket board before of any kind. So it'll be interesting trying out uh, using the mounting bracket and everything when I replace this cooler because uh, the, the heat sink because it's just passive heat sink. It's got this huge blower in front of it, obviously. So uh, part of the fun will be um, swapping out the heat sink when I put it into a new case. I have a liquid cooler. It's a small all in one uh, 120 millimeter one. I don't think it's going to be able to handle this thing. So uh, I might have to just invest in a, in a nice Noctua air cooler. They actually perform better in pretty much every circumstance, unless you're doing a custom liquid cooling loop, or if you have specific need to get around memory. It is just, air coolers are just better in every possible way, basically. The, the only advantages they have are, like I said, there's clearance for memory and it just, it's, there's less weight and everything on the board. It's all transferred to the radiator. So um, they have that advantage, but that's about it. This board 
has eight memory slots and can support up to half a terabyte of RAM, which would be pretty impressive if I could actually find or afford the memory that it uses uh, to get to that level. It's a load reduced memory. This is just standard registered DDR3. Uh, this is actually uh, 1866 or whatever. And it came with three 16 gig sticks of ECC registered memory, so totaling 48 gigs, three PCI slots, PCI Express slots. Very nicely, they're all 16X slots, even if electrically they are a 16, an 8, and then a 4, and the 4 is provided by the platform controller hub instead of the CPU. So uh, it would be nice if these were spread out a bit more because I'm going to be using probably all three at, at one point, if not initially i will expand to all three because i have my 10 gigabit nic because i have two 9211-8i serial attached storage controllers and i'm going to be uh, running these for serial ata drives you can use them for serial ata these provide eight ports at six gigabit each so i'm going to be running those in the two slower slots because the 4x interface should provide enough to, to handle this under most loads the um, 16x one unfortunately i'm kind of limited to an 8x slot for it or higher because of the requirements of the uh the gigabit nick that i have so i might be able to put it in the bottom slot if i can put it in the bottom slot that'll be perfect because it needs a lot of cooling uh, so when, when we do the NAS video, we'll get into more of this. But basically, I'm going to have to set up a fan or something to cool all three cards because the case I have doesn't support a fan right there. So uh, that'll be part of the project. So this board or this whole server is essentially just a case for my, C my component upgrades. I really don't care about the hardware in, in terms of the chassis. It's, it was really just to get... A, uh, all these parts like I said I specifically bought it and it looked like this guy was just selling it specifically listing all these components so that uh, you know people would be buying it as components essentially uh, the power supply is a standard uh, 1U power supply it's only like 260 watts which seems a little low I think this is a 130 watt TDP CPU so uh, it's kind of pushing it, although under load when I was just running Cinebench, it, it only hit like 170 or something. As much as I'd like to keep this whole case for my upgrade, it, one U cases just can't hold the drives that I, I need. I'll probably have to chuck this in the metal recycling unless I can come up with a use for a one U server, which uh, I don't think I really have a use for one. There are a couple variations of this motherboard. One of them includes three 64-bit PCI slots in addition to the PCI Express slots. I would have absolutely no use for those. Some models include an SAS controller here where you get a whole bunch more ports here. The board uses a strange 90-degree TPM header. I've never actually seen this before on a, on a board. It's possible that their TPM modules are just too big and they require an angled connector or maybe even a standard one won't fit inside a 1U case. Here's one of the 16 gig Samsung sticks. This looks like really cheap thermal paste. This is that really shiny stuff that you get in bulk. Ugh. I don't think this is quality thermal paste. And by the way, this is a really light and cheap heat sink. This is just a little flimsy aluminum one. There we have it. One of the main reasons why I upgraded an uh, Intel E5 1650V2 six core 3.5 gigahertz Xeon processor. And I can even upgrade this for about $300 to a top of the line uh, 2600 series. And I think they're either eight or 10 cores. Right now for my NAS, that I'm the setup I have now, which is strictly just backup and serving the files for my Final Cut Pro uh, libraries, 
the CPU is pretty much not used at all. I mean, currently I have an E3, uh, I can't remember the model, I think it's the 1230, which is a quad core 3.1 gigahertz CPU. And that thing's basically not used at all. I plan to switch over to start using the server as a Plex server as well, which means it'll be doing video encoding. So that is a very big bonus and having six, six cores will really help that. The CPU I have now, as well as this one, also support uh, the Intel AES and I instructions. So uh, basically what they do is allow you to encrypt your hard drives in FreeNAS without any performance penalty. Like it's, it's essentially zero. They've done a bunch of testing and with any kind of modern CPU, which is basically all CPUs that have the instruction set, the slowdown is essentially zero. You, you, you just can't write to drives that quickly. I mean, I'm sure you could come up with some kind of array of SSDs where you could, but currently, realistically, you can't outdo the, the encryption it's just a nice thing to have in case your house is broken into. And it also means that if your one of your hard drives breaks, you can send it in for warranty and you don't have to wipe the drive because that drive has all of its data scrambled already, which is pretty convenient. Speaking of drives, the four terabyte drive that came with it was wiped and it said it was wiped in the eBay listing. So I didn't even bother checking that and that's why I haven't booted up the system or anything. All you need to know about it is it's loud, the, the system, and there's no operating system. So what are we gonna do? Look at the BIOS, it's not that interesting. <laughs> the hard drive only had 70 hours of use on it. So it's basically a brand new drive. Amazingly, the internal four terabyte RE drive that came with it is still under warranty until 2020. According to Western Digital, that is 880 days from time of filming. <laughs> So that is pretty great. I mean, RE drives are super expensive and they're very, very good quality. Although if we're talking hard drives, I do recommend the SE series if you want a really high reliability, high performance drive because they're, they're basically an RE series, but cheaper. And they're, they're almost identical from what I can tell. I mean, I, I really don't know what it is they're why they exist. Why don't they just lower the price of the RE ones? But they're they're great. Five year warranty, very good quality. Uh, I'm going to be putting those into the NAS too. Just about the only other thing in this case is this little PCB that runs off to the front panel. I mean, it's just a couple LEDs and a uh, power switch. It's funny that they have this big. Uh, ribbon cable running to it even though it's really just a couple connections and uh, yeah only other thing is this Molex to uh, serial ATA power connector adapter that came with it well, many hours later it passed its mem test so time to take this thing apart so it can go into the NAS